Welcome to the first AFC event, Boxing Edition. AFC stands for Amateur Fighting Challenge, and it's a friendly, non-official, light contact tournament where hobbyists and amateurs can test their skills and gain new experiences. Originally, the tournament was supposed to have standard elimination ladder form. However, due to COVID-19 pandemic and the absence of three out of eight contestants, the tournament changed its formula to round-robin fights. The winner was determined by the win count. Let's get ready to rumble! Shinobi Hiryu, 33 years old. As a teenager, he trained boxing in a club for a few months. Few years later, he started experimenting fusing different martial arts. He likes to often switch his position from southpaw to orthodox stance and vice versa. Currently, he's interested in ninjutsu, however, he calls his style freestyle. Damian, 30 years old. He began his martial arts journey with capoeira. Later, he trained Wing Chun. These two styles are his foundations. In 2014, he injured his knee, which forced him to take break from martial arts. Currently, he trains judo. Damian likes to stay loose and use head movements in dodging. Damian in black and red against Shinobi in black and blue. These are two minute rounds, two rounds. If there's a tie, there's an extra round. So I can see that uh, Shinobi has uh, more height, which gives him extra reach, which is an advantage in boxing, a big advantage. That was interesting. Damien dodged those punches. But yeah, you can already see the longer reach is going to be a problem for Damien, who is shorter. Damien has more of a square stance, while Shinobi seems to be fighting more on the side using that longer jab. From the information I see, Shinobi has more of a freestyle uh, experience, not focused on one specific style. You can see that Damien has more of a proper boxing form though. I know he trained a little bit of boxing. So yeah, when you have a guy like this that throws the longer hand and has more reach, you want to get in close, you want to get nice and tight to make them uncomfortable so that the distance does not favor them. But it's pretty neat. It's uh, clean for a guy that does not specialize in boxing, like Shinobi, he has uh, quite a clean, clean style and movement. That was a good good throw there. You can see how Damien tries to slip through those punches and then go on the inside, which is what he wants to do. You want to do that when you're smaller. You want to slip through the jab and go inside and counter or cut your opponent off. But yeah, that, well, that was a good punch. When your opponent has such a long reach, if he moves around, it's not easy. It's easier said than done. That was a good round. I don't know who I would give this round to. Both of them landed a couple of nice punches. That was a good slip and then punch to the body. Yeah, that was pretty good. That's a very weird way to block. It's like George Foreman, when you put your arms like that, like a crab a block. That was an interesting hand. That longer reach does give him an advantage. So Damien should, here's to round two, Damien should actually get nice and close and pressure as much as possible on the very close range so that he nullifies that longer reach. All of these guys are wearing headgear and mouth guards, of course. This is a semi-contact or light contact without knockouts. So you want to score points on clean punches either to the head or body if you hit the guard that is not a point 
of course it's difficult sometimes to see which punches land in cleanly especially for the judges that are standing there live during the fight it's complicated sometimes to assess what went in there cleanly and what didn't so there that's good that's what Damien has to do he's got to go in there pressure and throw combinations at the short range that was a good slip and counter the thing is when you get really close it's harder to see the technique cleanly the longer reaching punches are easier to score for points that was a good one yeah the longer arm is giving some good points in there again to the body so shinobi gets those longer punches which will give him some clean and clear points Damian needs to get in there on the inside and be a little bit more dirty it's pretty frustrating to fight a guy with a lot of reach you gotta really get all over him like get on top of him so that he can't use that long arm you can tell the difference in styles here that was a great counter there another good punch to the face by Damien I don't know this is this one is hard to call I think I would call it for Damien he put in a few good punches counter punches there to the face they might go for a third round yeah, those long arms are hard to deal with but Damien does slip through those punches and throw throw some nice counters yeah, that was a good punch by Shinobi and another good punch by Shinobi. Shinobi sh switches between the orthodox and left southpaw stance. You want to do that sparingly, you don't want to do it too much actually. It's unsafe. Okay, so now I can see Shinobi is moving around more, he's trying to keep the distance landing those longer cleaner shots he knows that if Damien gets in close it's gonna be very complicated for him so he doesn't want to let him do that he moves that's a good foot footwork he moves around he moves around doesn't stay in the same spot if he stays in the same spot Damien will go in there and pressure him and he, it'll be a very big problem for him The difference, the main difference being, besides the reach, Damien is more comfortable using the rear hand along with the lead hand because his stance is square. Where Shinobi focuses on the lead hand, has to switch stances and use the other hand. This was very, very close. I really cannot see who won here. Let's see what the judges call. This round was really. For me, it was really close. Because of the height difference and the reach, Shinobi might have pulled it. Yeah, Shinobi got some cleaner punches. That was a good match. Michael, also known as Zen Dragon on YouTube, 36 years old. He started his martial arts journey with Kung Fu, to which he devoted 10 years. Currently, he continues his training, however, he mixes in different styles like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and MMA. Michael can be called a combo puncher. Alex, 23 years old. He's an ex-karate practitioner. He's fascinated with Jeet Kune Do philosophy and style of Bruce Lee. His personal style is characterized by fast, dynamic moves. Alex can be called an unorthodox counter-puncher. Michael from the Zen Dragon channel against Alex. Michael wearing gray and black, Alex black and blue. So the first round starts. Now Alex is a Jeet Kune Do practitioner that has a little bit of background with Karate while Michael 
is a kung fu practitioner that has trained in MMA. So you can tell that his MMA training gives him a more proper and cleaner boxer stance and more proper boxing punches. Alex, on the other hand, is trying to use that longer reach with the lead hand moving in and out. I don't know if he's doing that because of the Jeet Kune Do concept of using the lead hand or simply because he feels more comfortable doing that. He lowers his head also to avoid the punches. His, his guard, Alex's guard is too low he, because he focuses only on touching and going out, in and out with the lead hand. Where Michael has a proper boxer's guard. Th that was a good punch by Michael there. Yeah, this is like a cat and mouse game. Alex punches, goes in, goes out, and runs around the ring while Michael is more boxed, trying to get in closer and throw a combination. The problem with fighting on such a side guard like Alex is doing is that it's very hard to use your rear hand if you're on your side like that. You can see there when you get in close, the rear hand gets becomes kind of useless, especially if it's so low. So Michael should get in closer and try to pressure him and throw combinations that are a shorter distance. Alex's game is clearly to keep the distance like a fencing game. Punch or hit and get out quickly. Stop. Let's see how this goes. I prefer the closer range exchange of combinations, but when it, it's a game of points, Alex's method is the safer way to keep the distance, go in, then go out. That was a good good hook in the end there. I don't know who got the first round. Let's see how the second round goes. Okay, yeah, so Alex does get in a few punches in there from a distance to the head and body. He switches between the head and body with that jab. If this was a full contact match, those wouldn't do too much damage, but in a point point game, yes, those are the ones, those count. So you, Michael should try to kill the distance, get as close as possible, so that he cannot use that longer jab. Yeah, what Alex does is he waits for a small opening, punches in, then gets out. Michael needs to get in closer and pressure him and throw combinations. Yeah, Alex is just, he does have good consistency of movement, he just moves around as much as he can. Yeah, he did, he did land a few of those longer jabs. Again, it's hard to see if anyone has an advantage here. But if Alex gets this, it's because of the longer reach. Did Michael does get some counter punches in though. Yeah. Alex has gotten a few of those longer jabs to the body. They have actually gone. In. That's where Michael needs to push. He needs to press there against the ropes and throw combinations. It's a very or unorthodox way of using his hands by Alex. Michael has a more proper boxer's form. I believe at a closer range, Michael would have an advantage. But when it's uh, if it's if they play this longer range game, Alex will will come on top because he gets longer reach and he moves around more.
Yeah, this was because of those cleaner, long, long range jabs. Carol, 24 years old. He's an unorthodox brawler who recently started his martial arts journey. In the past he trained Wing Chun for a month. Currently he has yellow judo belt. The third match in this tournament we have in black and blue Shinobi again and all grey it's Karol. All right, now both of these guys are tall, they have a, pretty much the same height. Yeah, Shinobi keeps going for the same strategy as before, which is what Alex was also doing, is using the lead hand to control the distance. So both of them are actually working with the lead hand, focusing on that jab. Okay, that was an attempt at a hook. But yeah, I've noticed there's not much use of the rear hand. Especially if you stand too much on your side. You don't okay. get to use the rear hand very comfortably. As both try to use the jab at the same time, they do collide there. You can see that Shinobi is a little bit more experienced here as he finds the gap to land some some punches and also connects up and uh, uh, high and low yes i the way this this round is going so far shinobi is is on the lead undoubtedly you can tell that he has more he's more comfortable he's more experienced Those hooks are too wide from a long distance. It's better to do use them at a short distance. Okay, that was interesting. Again, in this case, the one that benefits from the shorter distance would be Karol. From from the longer and mid range, Shinobi has a big advantage there. Okay, end of the first round. There we go. That lead. That was a good counter. But yeah, with the lead hand, Shinobi has a, an advantage here. That's at least how I see it. It's hard to see all the punches connecting though. Seeing the replay, there were a couple of good counters by Carl. Carol. Alright, for round two, let's see if they keep with the same strategy. They're studying each other a little bit more now. See, only having two rounds doesn't allow you to study your opponent too much. When you have a lot of rounds, you get to use the first couple of rounds to analyze and adjust to your opponent's strategy. With only two rounds, it's better to try to be more offensive and make the best use of the time that you have. Yeah, now they're... So Karol is, is using the orthodox stance, good counter there, he does switch every now and then. But I do notice Shinobi tends to go for the south paw a lot. As right here, he's on the south paw again. And switches back to the regular orthodox stance. Yes, I think that Karol did get some good counter punches in there but Shinobi's punches look more clear and clean to me I have to see, we'll see what the judges say alright that's a good, he's good with the, that lead jab very similar to Alex except Alex moves around more 
but they do both use the lead hand a lot to manage the distance. There we go, with, the, with that pressure, with the flushing, that's where you break that strategy of using the long jab. That's what Cuddle should do all the time, just flush him, pressure him. Okay, end of the round. I'm curious to see what what the decision will be here. Good counter, good counter. First to the body, then to the head. Okay, that was a good one. They both connect there. Sometimes these punches are not clear when you look at it at natural speed. Oh, there was a tie, okay. Well, that was the first, as soon as they started, good couple of punches by Shinobi. The third round is always shorter. Interesting. The problem I see, yeah, they not looking when when they get too close to each other, they don't look where they're punching, which is a normal mistake. But you lose a lot of accuracy like that. Alright. I don't know who got this round, we'll see. They both landed a couple of punches. Woo! Okay, good, good. Shinobi, yeah, good good point, both of you, fine. Good point. Now let's see Michael go up against Carol. Michael is much more experienced than Carol as far as I know. Carol is not very polished in his techniques. He doesn't have as much experience in combat sports, so this really will go as an advantage to Michael. Michael has the upper hand here. Carol does have one thing that for him which is he's not afraid of contact from what I've seen he likes going forward he's not afraid to get hit which is really important in the long run that makes a humongous difference just the willingness to go forward to be alright with getting hit although he still has that as you can see he has this natural instinct to look away when punches come his way that is completely normal until you manage to eliminate that habit through training good combinations there by Michael Michael keeps a proper boxing guard up there and does throw some nice combinations there it's good couple of good left hooks there with that longer reach and more polished form, Michael has an enormous advantage here. Yeah, I see that Carol has a very hard time figuring out how to get in there, but he does try though. Michael stays on the orthodox stance with the lead hand being the left and just waits a little bit more and throws those longer hands that was a good hook there yeah Michael landed a couple of clean punches in this round I give it to Michael that was a good couple of punches there that lead left hand that Michael has gives him a big there we go and he threw the hook there that didn't that one might have grazed it's hard to tell from these angles but those those long left hooks they're pretty dangerous okay let's go for round two now I give the first round to Michael with that leading hand he did connect a few good punches again again that left leading hand 
that was a good punch there actually by Caro. He did he did touch Michael's face. There we go. Yeah, what what Carol has to try to do is slip through Michael's punches and with his own left hand cut him off. Of course that is easier said than done. But you want to cut off the opponent's jab with your own jab to the body or face, which takes practice. And the experience difference here goes in favor of Michael. There you can see Michael is controlling the distance better in this round. Yeah, they, whenever Carol tries to go in close, they end up entangling each other. Okay, Michael stepped to the side better there. Better footwork. Good punch there. This is light contact, so it's not necessary to go full force. As long as the punch comes in cleanly, that's a point. That was a good movement. There, Michael had thrown a couple of good punches there. Switching from a jab to a hook. Yeah, he, Michael landed a few good punches here. I'm gonna give this round to Michael. <coughs> I don't know what the judges... That was another good jab up there. This is simply a difference of, of... That was a good effort there by Karo. Pushing and shuffling forward. But I think Michael scored a lot more cleaner, longer punches here. Some of his punches are not so clean, but that was a clean one there on the body and that hook there also. Sometimes the punches are not so evident, so it's hard to tell. But yeah, Michael has a more polished form there with the punches. Those longer reaching punches. They're clearer to see for the judges as well. So I would give this this both rounds to Michael. Okay, I'm surprised we're going to an extra round here. As I saw more cleaner... That was a good punch there by Karo. I saw a lot more cleaner punches by Michael. But again, the judges, they have a different perspective from where they are than me watching this on video. Okay, Michael tried to throw a small combination there, but missed. It's getting a little bit dirtier now. And they're probably both a little bit more tired. There's another one. Cattle does occasionally land a good solid punch in there actually. Through a counter or a slip. So you should never underestimate the underdog. Even if the technique level is different. Okay. I think Michael is a little bit tired here. So he cannot keep the distance as he did on the other two rounds. This will be interesting. I can't I don't know who got this one. This last round was a little bit dirtier. Yeah, actually Carol landed a few good shots to the head and to the body here. This is gonna be tough. Let's see what the judges say. If I go by this round alone I would actually say that Carol win won this one. I think just Michael was just tired. Michael won I th from the first two rounds, but this last round, I'm not sure. Alright, now we have Damien versus Alex. Damien again in black and red, Alex in black and blue. Yes, Alex is. Once again, moving around, trying to work with the distance and the long jab, the in and out. See, when you have someone that switches stance like that so often, it's a little bit hard to go on the inside. Good, good touch there by Alex. The longer arms do give you an advantage for this kind of strategy. But uh, Damien does have good head movement as well. He does dodge punches and tries to go in for the counter. 
The big problem with Alex here is keeping his rear hand really low, which leaves him open for counter punches. See, Damien moves trying to go inside while Alex moves around trying to keep him at a distance, avoiding him. But he's, Alex is moving around trying not to be at the same place at the same time. There we go. There's where Al uh, Damien has to keep pressuring. Again with the uh, in and out. There we go. Damien did manage to slip in a punch to the body there. Again a good jab to the head. There we go. That's where Damien needs to work pressuring and going on slipping into the inside Alex P keeps going with his strategy though it's been working for him just using the long lead hand moving in and out there that pressure Damien should not stop with the pressure okay that's the first time I see them I see Alex going in for the exchange in short range A lot of punches don't get to contact because they both move around a lot. That's the spot where Damien should work in. Get him into the corner or against the ropes and just throw combinations. Of course, when your opponent is not going to let you do that, he'll move around. Good, good touch to the face there. It's hard to know on that first round. It was very even in my eyes. Let's go for round two and see what happens. Damien does have more of a proper boxing stance. He's He's got his hands higher. Well, Alex just tries to use his Jeet Kwon Do type leading hand method. See in Jeet Kwon Do they focus use a lot on using the lead hand or the re lead leg if they're kicking so I can see that being an influence here. There we go there against the ropes that's that's where you gotta work when you have someone like that who's throwing the long range punches and we're back to the same strategy they've both landed a few punches again this is very even it's it's hard for me to get to any conclusions right now Damien does slip in some counter punches every now and then that lead hand. I think that lead the lead jab has scored Alex a bunch of points as he goes high and low. He also keeps his body low to avoid getting his face on the way of counters. Like he makes his face a difficult target by keeping his body low. But there when when Damien pressures he has a hard time getting out of there. goes up into the body and because his head is so far away from his opponent it's hard for Damien to give him a counter a good moment for Damien where he got him against the ropes there. That 
yes, and that was a good hook. So a final round. When there's a tie, they go for a third round to break the the equality. It's a decisive round. It doesn't seem like it, but uh, you do get tired in two minutes of throwing punches. There we go. There we go. Damon is trying to go more for the offensive. Alex keeps with what's been working for him the long the long reach game the long jab up and down he doesn't have a traditional boxers form his arms are low his guard is low but he's doing the in and out game a lot of punches do slip to the sides as either of them dodge and weave, bob and weave. I didn't see too many clear shots here. Again, I don't know who, who will take this one. But because of the reach, Alex does get a lot of punches in there. He might get this, this match. Good job. Yes, Alex got it. So now we have a match between Michael and Shinobi. This should be interesting because they're the two guys with the longest reach. Although Michael has a very different style to Shinobi. So Michael and Damien use more of proper boxing methods. Where Alex and Shinobi use more of the long reach Jeet Kune Do style punches. As you can see here, yeah, Michael tries to go in and throw couple of combinations while Shinobi is trying to keep the distance. Good counter there. Another good counter. Yes, Michael put a few good counters in there. And they're looking for the... There we go. Yeah, boxing is like a game of chess where you try to find an opening or wait for your opponent's mistake. Even though you have your strategy, sometimes it's not possible to go the way you want it to go. You have to adjust. Okay, Michael is doing a good job countering with the lead left hook to that. He's done it a few times already. Alright, good. That was a good good connection by Shinobi with the lead hand. Both Shinobi and Alex need to use the rear hand more. Fo they focus way too much on just the lead hand. Okay, Michael goes in for the offensive and he did put in a couple of good punches there. I would give that one to Michael again. Of course, I am not present there so it is hard to know what the judges see and what they call for but I did see it there we go some good counters by Michael that was a good one too he touched and he avoided the counter both of them went in there but yeah with the lead there we go with the left hand Michael did put in some good counter punch there we go again it's kind of an odd overhand jab that he does sometimes. When you have long arms, you can do that. See, Michael does stay with his orthodox stance most of the time, which is a good thing. Switching around too often is not very good. You want to do it when it's the right time. You don't want to switch hands all the time. 
good. Now Michael is a little bit more neat. Another good punch to the face. Another good counter over there. Good job. I see that most mostly nobody wants to go into the pocket the very close range exchange of punches and everyone tries to go for the uh, there was a drop but that was not that was just a slip anyway they will try to fight from a longer range the key is in fact knowing how to use the close range fighting when you when you box that's where it gets complicated interesting that rocked him that was a good good punch there so shinobi only uses good good cross there with the rear hand she know i was about to say shinobi uses primer primarily he uses the forward hand the lead hand he did throw a couple of, of good rear hands though and he did rock michael there before knocking him down they're not going full contact here, but some punches will always land a little bit harder. Okay, Michael was trying to throw in some heavier combinations in the end. This one is hard to tell. The first round I give it to Michael, but the second round I don't know. Shinobi did manage to knock him down with some nice punches, we'll see. We'll see how they go. There was a great, great punch to the face by Shinobi. I think Michael in the end decided he wanted to go further, but Shinobi. it didn't quite go. Let's see. Yeah, Shinobi. For this match now we have Carol versus Alex. Now it already looks like Carol wants to go more on the offensive and shorten the distance, which is good. There are a few touches already. Now the way that you will notice that Alex ducks a lot, he brings his body down to keep his head out of the way which forces Carol to punch downwards when you have a shorter arm that can be a little bit uncomfortable there, but on the short distance there we go on the short there he should have kept pushing through and the short distance Alex is very uncomfortable yeah Alex is the of, of all the guys he is the one that likes the long range the most he uses that lead hand to fight from as long and far as possible. So the best strategy, as I said before, would just be to smother him, to go on top of him. There, there, just put him against the ropes and throw combinations. There we go. From the information I have, Carol has the least experience of, of all these guys, but he's doing a good job. He's doing a good job. He's not afraid to go forward. He did, he just ate a punch there but he is trying to, to move forward. Oh, a good exchange there. From that camera angle, I didn't see very well if the punch is connected, but. Yeah, they're, they're both less aggressive right now. We're like looking for an opening. That's where, whoa, good punch, great punch there. That's where Carol has to keep pressing. Good job by Carol, who is the least experienced one. Some good punches to the body there. Again, because Alex just wants to use the long distance, it limits his resources. Also running around and losing sight of the opponent is not a good thing 
Ale Carol is less technical, Carol, but he does go forward. That was a great punch over there. Let's go for round two and see what happens here. Great job there. He's going forward trying to push him. To, excellent. Especially when you know you're not going to go full contact, when it's like semi-contact. You can actually go forward more comfortably because you know you're not going to get hurt. So that's what he's doing and he's doing a good job there. For the le least experienced one, he's, he's actually doing really, really well. He did put a, a few more good punches in there. There's also the fact that when you go against someone that does not have refined a technique, it makes things difficult sometimes because you cannot read the movements of your opponent. So you cannot react accordingly. Good counter there. Yes, Alex is doing the, the Jeet Kune Do type of thing where he just wants to thrust in with that lead punch. He waits and when he sees the opportunity he lunges forward with the lead punch. Good lead punch to the body there. That jab. That is a long reaching jab. Carol landed a lot of punches but the cleaner looking punches are those long jabs by Alex. If Alex gets this fight, fight as a win it's because of those long reaching jabs to the body that are very clear. See when they get close like that and there's an exchange it's not clear it's very hard to see which punches connect and which don't. See there's a lot of punches there but if they hit on the guard those are not actual proper points. But yeah I, I have to say Carol's aggression and courage were very good here. Great job going forward pressuring trying to cut the distance. If he had better technique he would have won this match. But I think Alex is going to be the winner because of those cleaner, more clear punches that he landed. V there you go, he landed. He lands a couple of clean, clear jabs one after another to the face of the body. Where Carol just tries to push through but his punches are a little imprecise the technique is not refined <laughs> incredible wow good he won here we go with michael against damien now this was, is going to be an interesting one because they've sparred together many times before and they're the two with the most proper boxing form here this is an interesting interesting match to watch see this is the first match where they're both getting in closer and throwing combinations nice to see Michael has the reach advantage here but Damien does have a good head movement there we go he does avoid those punches Very good, very good managing there. Michael did get a few touches in there. But you can see Damien tries to bob and weave and then counter and go on the inside. Good head movement again. Michael is a little bit more stiff, but he has the reach. And he does keep his hands up at all times. So they both have more proper boxing form than the other guys. That lead hand is an advantage for Michael. Damien needs to cut and go inside, cut the distance. Michael landed a few good jabs already. It's that long, long hook, that jab hook kind of hybrid that he uses with his lead hand that lands.
good. I'm, I'm starting to see some more combinations here that we're not, we're, we didn't see in the other matches because Michael and Damien feel more comfortable getting in closer. That was a good round. Good round. Good cup, good exchange there. A good couple of punches going in and out. Okay, Michael put in a good combination there. Good slip by Damien there. He avoided a lot of punches throughout the round. There's nothing more frustrating than going up against a guy who knows to dodge, to bob and weave, and to get out of the way when you cannot hit your opponent. It's really frustrating and it's exhausting as well. It it's tiring to throw punches and not be able to land. What I see there is that he, they're both focusing on the head too much. Should go a little bit to the body as well, switch between the head and the body. You cannot defend everything at the same time. Nice beginning for the second round. Nice start. I think this is the most exciting match so far. They, they're both friends, they know each other, so they've sparred together many times, so they're comfortable throwing punches at each other. And they both have a, a good, more proper boxing form. But remember, no one here is an actual boxer. They're, they've tr trained the different disciplines. They have a little bit of boxing, especially these two. And Michael, because of MMA, and they did train some boxing, so they do have a more proper form. Again, the, the reach advantage for Michael is, is a very important factor here. There we go. If, if Damien wants to get this, he needs to go on the inside. He needs to corner Michael. Yes, I can see Damien is trying to find an opening to go slip inside. But Michael is trying to use the longer reach with the jab. And that was a good hook. He's landed a lot of hooks throughout these couple of matches I've seen, Michael. Like the lead hand hooks, the head. He's landed quite a few of them. But it's a good tool for him. There we go, on the, lo on the closer range, Damien gets the advantage. He just needs to be able to get nice and close, nice and tight. That's a good hand again. Yeah, there was a couple of really good hooks by Michael. That, those long arms. Good. That was a good move by Damien going under and going to the body. And a great punch there. Counter punch to the head. Great counter there. That was a great hook to the head. Again to the body. Yeah, this second round had a way more variety, switching between high and low. Strikes to the face and to the body. More combinations as well. This is a very this is the most exciting match so far. At least for my taste. Okay, so there's a there was a tie according to the judges. Final round. Let's see what happens. It's difficult to call these these matches because if you don't see very clear punches sometimes it's it's complicated especially at the close range where you exchange a lot of blows it can be very hard to tell what was a clean punch and what wasn't that was good Oh, a couple of good jabs there. Yeah, the, the long reach. If Damien wants to take this, he's gotta smother him. Nice and close, it's the only way. Because with that long, the longer reach, those jabs give Michael the advantage. Okay, let's see what happens. It's a very close one, very close one. 
I'm not sure, maybe Michael got this one because of the longer the longer reach. Yeah. He did connect a couple of punches to the body and the head. That lead hook, lead jab and hook, pretty good on Michael's side. Let's see. Yeah, I think it was the lead hand that gave him the advantage there. It was a great match. Alright, now for the final match, we have Damien and Carol, and Michael is setting up the match here as the ring judge, the referee, so round one starts, let's see how it goes. Damien and Carol are friends as well, well they all know each other here, but uh, I know that Damien and Carol have been training together, so I would think they know each other pretty well. Again, these two, what I like to see this, I like to see this because they they are more comfortable going in on the closer range. There's more of an exchange of blows and combinations there. But you can tell Damien has a more proper boxing skill where he keeps his eyes on his opponent. Carol, on the other hand, moves his eyes away and doesn't have such a neat technique. So I would say that the odds on this one are in Damien's favor, being the more experienced and technical fighter. Yeah, a couple of good punches there. Yeah, Carol does go forward, he's a tough guy, he likes going forward, he's not afraid of getting in there. But the technical superiority here makes Damien the most likely winner. Yeah, you can see how Damien is very comfortable. He he's more relaxed. If you look closely, you will notice all the differences technically. Good block there by Damien. Good defense. Moving in his head around. Trying to make himself a difficult target. There, we, there's a couple of punches going in. Yeah, Damien has landed a few punches in the head already. I'll give this round to Damien. It's just experience. Experience makes all the difference in the world. He did land a good jab there, but he does not turn his body when using the rear hand, so that hand does not reach its target. Damien on the other hand has a more square stance, a good punch there, which allows him to connect with both hands more comfortably. Good punch there. Yeah. Carol has thrown a lot of punches, but Damien has more precision, so he throws less punches, but they actually land more cleanly. Let's go for round two. I'll give the first round to Damien. Because he was more neat and you can see the punches land better. Again, if I get some some of these decisions wrong, it's because I'm watching this on a video where the judges are actually standing there. We see different things. Good, good flurry of punches there. So the way you measure these points are by punches that connect cleanly. If you hit the guard, that's not a point. You want to hit the body, hit the head. That is a, an actual point. Yes, Damien again, he's more loose, he's more relaxed. But Cuddle keeps throwing, using a lot of the lead hand. When they get in closer, Damien has the advantage. I don't know why it stopped here. Ah, the helmet, the headgear. 
moved around. They're all wearing headgear, gloves, and mouthpieces, of course. Good, good. Yeah, Carol, he, he, it's, it's something that must be commended. He does go forward, even though he's not as technically polished as the other fighters. But you can tell how relaxed Damien is. There we go, he's looking for the counter, he did land a punch there. Good, there we go, that was a good jab to the body. Okay, I would give this one to Damien. If they go to an another round, which might happen, but I would, I would just give this one to Damien again. If they go to another round, it's because the judges they see things differently when they're there in person than when you see it in through a video. It's a nice to see them getting close and exchange those like that. That's what I like to see in a boxing match. Not always trying to go from the distance, but more getting in close and throw combinations and get nice and gritty in there in the, in the close range. Especially for smaller guys, you know. Also, oh, there's a final round. I would have given this already to Damien, but let's see. Okay, that was a good start for Carol throwing the longer, the long lead hand. Again, I can see that Carol has more reach than Damien, but the the proper form, the better technique is on Damien's side. If he gets in close and throws combinations and avoids the punches. Okay, this was unexpected. He got cornered, at, but he recovered pretty well. That was good. You can tell that Damien, having a more square stance, he can throw combinations more comfortably. Both of them landed a few good punches there. So this is again going to be, if I go alone by this round, it's going to be close. I would have thought that Damien won this match, but if we go through this round alone, this round is actually pretty close between the two of them. Let's see what the judges say. So there's a lot of these movements are not actual punches. They do get entangled in a lot. So that's why it's hard to judge this. By unanimous decision, and it's Damien. Good job. Okay, yeah. I would have given it to Damien in the first round anyway. Good job.